Here we are in the next section of cost structure of the firm. We're going to be moving into this thing called marginal cost, and that's over here called MC. It's another kind of cost, and we'll graph that once we're done. But I thought it might be helpful if we work through a particular um, hmm, schedule here just to see how this works. Let's say that we have a fixed cost. Uh, let me see what I have on my numbers here. Let's say a nice round number like $1,000. Now this is the sort of thing that I'm going to ask you to do on a test. So if you can do this, you can do it on a test. It's not hard, um, but like everything, like riding a bicycle is not hard. You just need to fall off enough times and practice enough that pretty soon it becomes second nature. And that's what's going to happen here. So this is an example of something that you'll need to do on an exam. And I'll work through this one for you. So what we have here is a schedule of output from one to seven units. And I just picked some variable cost. You see the variable cost increases as we increase output. Of course, all these costs are in dollars. So we're going to fill this chart out, this schedule out, all the way over here with everything that we know how to do to get to something that we don't yet know how to do. So let's begin to fill this out. What was the, let's see, what was that formula for total cost? It was fixed cost, that's right, fixed cost plus variable cost, but we don't have a fixed cost column. And you might not have one on your test. So what do you do? You look around and you find, oh, Somewhere in the question, it says fixed cost is $1,000, but there's no column for it. Think outside the box and put one in. So we'll put fixed cost right here. And so at an output of 1, we said the fixed cost is going to be the same no matter what the output. And so at an output of 1, our fixed cost is going to be what it always is, which is $1,000. Is that going to change when we go here? No, it's still going to be $1,000. So we can fill that out all the way down to here because fixed cost stays the same regardless of output. Now, once we got fixed cost and we got variable cost, it's very easy to get total cost. So I have a very helpful assistant out there with a calculator who will quite quietly uh, add 1,000 to 400, and I can read her lips there. That's $1,400. So at an output of 1, our total cost will be the sum of our fixed cost plus our variable cost gives us our total cost. Now, while the numbers are still fairly simple here, let me add this one to this one, and I get something like 1600 So you all there in radio land, uh, TV land, monitor land, I, I hope you're following me here. That's not difficult. It's not ro rocket science here. And so if I'm going to add $1,000 to this number, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you setting that for me. And now if I'm going to add 1000 to this number, this she's not saying, but I'm going to need her help in a little bit. It's 2160 And if I add the 1000 here to this, it's 2,600. If I have my fixed cost of 1,000 to this, it's 3,400. And both of you catch me if I do anything wrong because when I'm on camera, I stutter a lot and my mind goes frazzled, so keep me on track here if I make any mistakes. And I think if I add 1,000 to this number here, I'm going to have 4,800. Do I have a witness on that? Am I okay? Now you all can do this. You all can do this. Yes, you can do this. Now let's go to average fixed cost. Let's see. Average fixed cost. Average fixed cost was our fixed cost divided by quantity. Okay. Well, we got a quantity of 1 here. And do we have a fixed cost at quantity of 1? Yeah, that's right there. That's 1,000 divided by 1. So our average fixed cost here is 1,000. Get that? Fixed cost which we've got, it's the same for everyone, versus divided by our output. In this case, on this line, it's 1. So this number divided by that one gives us that number of 1,000. Now, let's come down here to an output of 2. So we erase the 1, we put in a 2. We now have 1,000 divided by 2. And if somebody has a calculator, 
they're going to tell me that that is something close to 500. <laughs> she did a five. That's, give me five. High five. Five on that? Okay. Now, moving right along. Our fixed cost is this, and now our quantity is going to go up to three. Three, and see what kind of hand sign language I can get for this one, for 1,000 divided by three. Three, three, two, three, three, three. That's pretty good. Three, 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 and it keeps on going, but we'll just rattle with that. Now, if we take our 1,000 divided by four, no matter, I can get this one. I know this one. This one, this one I can do. Thank you very much. Now, if we have 1,000 divided by five, right? I'm not getting any feedback here. Am I right, class? Okay, I got a nod on that. Now, 1,000 divided by 6. Uh, that's not intuitively obvious. 1, 6, 6, 6, will round to 7. Okay? One more time here. We have 1,000 divided by 7, and we get... 143. Let me, that was a little sloppy here. Let me go 140. I can't write. 143. There we go. 143. Now let me stop, pause for a second. Remember our average fixed cost curve? It starts very high. And as we increase output, it drops like a stone. It drops $500 going from an output of 1 to an output of 2. And when we go from an output of 2 to an output of three right here, it drops another almost $200. But when we're going from four to five, it only drops $50. And here we're only dropping some 20 some dollars. So you see it drops really, really, really fast and then it just kind of tapers off. So that it doesn't have a U shape to it. The average fixed cost curve does not have a U shape to it. It just keeps going down, 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 down. Now, we know how to do that one. How do we get the average variable cost? Well, the average variable cost, average variable cost equals variable cost divided by quantity. So let's pick the first quantity we have. That's a one. And at this quantity, what is our variable cost? Anybody who's looking? 400. You see where I got my 400 right here? I put it up here with my variable cost. 400 at a quantity of one. 400 and quantity 1, 400 divided by 1 is, that's all right, I can do it. I'm, I'm getting good at this, I think. Good at this. Now let's get the next one. At an output of 2, so we're going to put a 2 down here, because we're dealing with this line right here, an output of 2. What is our variable cost? It's not 400. Our variable cost is now 600. So we now have, yes. 600 divided by 2 would be 300. I, I'm losing my train of thought here. Is that 300? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's do the next one. We're going to have at an output of 3, 3 goes right here, our variable cost is 840. I'm going to need some math majors here. Just a second here. So an output of 3, 840 divided by 3. Can I get a little help here? 280. But watch, our average variable cost is starting high. As we increase output, it comes down. We increase output again from 2 to 3. It comes down some more. So let's do the next one here. The next one is an output of 4 right here. And at the output of 4, our variable cost is 1160. We take 1160 divided by 4, and my Answer, lady, says 190? 290. 290. Oh, look what just happened. It bottomed out. It bottomed out at an output of 3, and now our average variable cost is starting to inch its way back up again. Well, let's do the next one, an output of 5. An output of 5, our variable cost is... 1,600. We take the 1,600 divided by 5 and we get an answer of? 320. 320. Ooh, it's starting to move back up. I'm going to circle this one because this was the lowest number. This column didn't have any lowest number. It just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. But this one started high, gets lower, bottomed out, and now it's going back up again. Let's do it again for our 6. If we put a 6 down here for quantity, 
and our variable cost is 2400 nice round number and we get over here a nice round number of 400 we got one more to do here we're going to take this number which is our variable cost our variable cost 3800 and we divide it by the quantity at that output 7 and we do that and our calculator says we get 543. The average variable cost curve does have a U shape to it. It starts high, goes down, hits bottom, and it goes back up again as we continue to increase output. Now, to get the next one, how do we get average total cost? Well, average total cost equals total cost divided by quantity. So at an output of 1, do we have a total cost? And the answer is, well, at an output of 1, our total cost is 1,400. 1,400 divided by 1 is, I think, did I get it right? Yes? But let's stop a second. We could go to the next one. In fact, we probably should. An output of 2, our total cost it's a total cost column right here. Our total cost is 1600 And we can almost do that in our head, and it comes down to 800 But isn't it also true that average fixed cost plus average variable cost equals average total cost? So we could have added this number to this number to get that number, and add this number to this number to get this number. We'll try it one way. If you add those together, what do we get? She's working. She's thinking. She's pushing the numbers. 613.33. Well, six, 613. 613. Well, let's do it the other way. Let's say that we've got at an output of 3. I'll be embarrassed if it doesn't come out right. We've got a total cost of 180. Four, zero. Now let's do it this way. We take 1840, divide by 3, and do we get 613? Yes. Yes! So which is the right way to do it? Either way. Either way. Well, if we were accountants, we would do it one way and check it the other, if we're good accounting students. And since we were so hard on them before, we have to give credit and honor where credit is due to our accounting faculty and students. Now, let's keep on going here. Let's add this number to this number quickly. And what is that? 540. 540. Thank you very much. And the next one, I can do this one. This is 520, right? Is that right? Yes. yes. And this one is 567, right? Yes. And the last one is? Now we're looking at our average total cost. It starts very high. It drops. It drops. One more. It drops. It drops again. And that's where it bottoms out. And now it starts going back up again. Okay. That goes along with what we had over here. We had dollars here. Quantity here. We had average variable cost it bottomed out here and in this case it bottomed out average variable cost bottomed out at an output of three to go one two three it bottomed out at three and our average total cost bottomed out at five three four five so it bottomed out about here so it came down like this and went around like that average total cost. So what I'm saying is, according to our schedule here, as we increase output, we come to the bottom of our average variable cost curve first, and then we come to the bottom of our average total cost curve second, according to our graph here. So far, so good. Wish I could answer any questions, but I don't hear anything, so we shall continue here. So now we're going to the point in this particular lecture here where we're going to answer a very important question that we started out.
what in the world is this thing called marginal cost? First, a digression on marginality. Marginality as in marginal utility, or marginal revenue, or marginal cost. Let's say this podium is the present. We live in the present. Over here is the past. Over here is the future. So in terms of time, marginality is how people think. And economists are often caught saying that everyone makes their decision on the margin. Well, the margin of what? The margin, that little strip, ideological strip between the present and the future. Um, I've got a piece of paper here, over here, my notes for this particular lecture section. And this section over here of empty space is called the margin. It's just the in-between between the paper, the writing, and the non-paper. When we're saying that everyone makes their decisions on the margin, they make their decision on the margin of where they're living at in the present and where their mind goes into the very immediate future. Now, I just got back from lunch, but let's say that some, hmm, there's a IGA over here someplace I think of, and they gave me a ticket for a free lunch over there. I'm making this up for a free lunch. And I go over there and they said, okay, you've got um, three choices here. You can go down the Chinese and eat Chinese, or you could eat Mexican, or you could have an Italian meal. So which would you like? Would you like the Chinese meal, or would you like the Mexican meal, or would you like the Italian meal? And I look down the line, the Italian looks really, with that Mediterranean diet, that's a really appetizing thing, spaghetti and pizza and... Yeah, that, that looks pretty good there. Uh, over here, the, hmm, the um, hmm, tacos, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that looks pretty good. I like, I like Mexican. Chinese, I've always loved Chinese. And so I think, here's my ticket, I think I'll take the Chinese, mm, Mexican. Uh, no, Italian. Uh, Mexican. Uh, uh. And people behind me are saying, <laughs> either make up your mind or get out of the way. I'm making my decision on the margin. The margin of what? The margin of the present, and in my mind, I'm going through the last time I had Italian spaghetti dinner and what it tastes like and how much I liked it compared to the last time I ate Mexican and what it tastes like and what I could expect that to feel like versus the last time I ate Chinese and what that tastes like and what I could expect. And based upon my future thinking of what is it that I'm going to feel when I pick one of these, I pick based upon not in the present. I make my decision based upon what I believe is going to happen in the immediate future. So in my mind, I'm going just one step past the present, and in my mind, I'm going into the future to try to figure out what it is in the future that will give me the most utility, and I pick that. Now, that's what economists say we make our decisions on the margin, the margin of where we are and the immediate future, the very next choice we make. So what would be your marginal test? Well, I got greater on this one, greater on this one, greater on this one, but my marginal test would be the very next test that I haven't taken yet. What is your marginal breath of fresh air? It's the very next breath that I haven't quite taken yet. So marginal, whether it's marginal cost, meaning the cost of the very next unit that I haven't really built yet, or marginal revenue, meaning the sales revenue I get from the very next unit that I haven't quite sold yet. Marginal means the very next thing in the future. So if I am here at an output of one, my marginal production would be when I go from one to two. It's not at one. It's not at two. It's going from one to the next one in the future. 
from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4. So if we say, well, what is the marginal cost? Well, the marginal cost is the cost it, that I'm going to incur when I go from making my first one, which is $1,400, to making my second one. I've already spent this. This is spilt milk. It's over. It's sunk cost. But when I produce one more, my total cost is going to go up to $1,600. So what, is, what, what did it really cost me to produce one more? Well, it cost me the $200 to go from here to here. It cost me $200. So actually, marginal cost, although you won't see it this way in the textbook, the marginal cost is really in between these two lines. So it's really like 200. OK, let's have some audience participation if I can get any. If we have a total cost here of 1,600 and an output of 2, what is my marginal cost of producing one more? Well, it would be this number, subtract uh, this number, and I subtract this off of that number. And I get something like 240, right? So I'm going to put the 240 right here. Well, what's our marginal cost to go from an output of 3 to an output of 4? Well, that would be this number less that number, and what would that be? 2160 less 1840. We're burning up the battery. What is it? 320. It's 320. Let's keep going here. When we go, that was from here to here. Let's go from 4 to 5, right here, from 4 to 5. What number do we get here when we subtract this number from this one? 440. 440. And we subtract this number from this one, from four, 5 to 6. 800. 800. Now, you wouldn't lie to me now, would you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't lie. Okay, let's go to the next one. Subtract this number from this, and we can almost do this. What? 1,400. 1,400, yeah. There. I've got a question. Because this catches some students. Did I make a mistake? Am, am I okay? Okay, what we're doing here is saying, what is the marginal cost? I, I'm here at 1. Somebody asked, could you make one more for me, please? Well, what is my average cost? Well, my average cost is $1,400 per unit. That's my average cost. Well, what would it cost you to make one more? You've already made that one. What would it cost you to make one more? And the answer would be $200 to make one more. Make one more, well, it would be another $240. To make one more, it would be another $320. Make one more, $440, $800, $1,400. But we're more Arabic than Roman. Roman numerals didn't have a zero, and so they had problems counting. But the Arabic people had a zero, and so shouldn't we really have a zero here? Isn't that really the starting point, a zero rather than one? Yes, thank you very much. And is there a fixed cost at zero? Well, yeah, there's a fixed cost for every output, including zero, and so that would be $1,000. Is there a variable cost? If we don't produce anything, do we have any labor and do we have any raw material used up? Uh, no, because we haven't produced anything, so that's a zero. So do we have a total cost if we don't produce anything? And the answer is, yeah, our fixed cost of 1000 Hmm. So what would we have for an average fixed cost? We take the fixed cost, we divide it by our output, and what do we get here when we divide that thing by zero? Zero, right? How about infinity? Yeah. How about both zero and infinity? Uh, no. no. Uh, you guys are playing games with me. Don't do this. Uh, it's not zero. It is verboten. 
you are not allowed. But do it, put it in your calculator, see what happens. Divide anything by zero, and it says you've been a bad person. The math police are going to come get you if you try to divide by zero anymore because they're reporting it somewhere. You're just not allowed to do it. So the same way with our variable cost of zero divided by zero, even you're not even allowed to divide zero by zero. You're not allowed to divide anything by zero. But do we have a total cost? Yes, we do. 1,000 divided by zero. I guess we can't put anything in there either. Okay? What I'm saying here is sometimes if you don't have columns that you need, well, then put it in there. If you don't have a line that you need, well, then put it in there. I don't want you to be thinking that you have to be in this box. I want you to think, I, I, I got to have all the data that I need. Oh, yes. That was an oops. I came right to the end of the cliff, and I forgot to give you the punchline. Uh, I need to fill this chart out. We're at the point where, well, what if we need a zero in here to fill it out? Well, now, is there some number that could and should go right there? Because remember, we got our 200 when we went from an output of 1 to an output of 2. And our total cost went from 1,000, oops, Yes, from 1400 to 1600, and that's where we got our 200. But it, do we have a marginal cost when we go from producing nothing to producing one? And the answer is when we're producing nothing, our total cost is 1000. When we're producing one, our total cost is 400. So, yes, indeed, we need to put a 400 right there. And I forgot to mention that. That's important. So, when we come back, we're just about ready right now to talk about our profit maximization rule. And that is a really important point. And so I want to just stop here with the, that little addition right there and start in with a new session on our profit maximization rule.